The strange universe is still here. COVID is still here. And now there's just so much information being thrown at us from so many different angles. It's very hard to organize and categorize and parse the information correctly. So we got together with Dr. Dan Grove and other medical professionals to help sift through that information and find out what's the deal with COVID. In this video, we're gonna ask, answer some questions about the concepts of quarantine and isolation. And I have an expert on the topic here, Jamie Rubin. Jamie, why don't you introduce yourself? Thanks, Dan. Uh, my name is Jamie Rubin. I am an infection prevention and control specialist with the Infectious Disease, Epidemiology, and Outbreak Response Bureau at the Maryland Department of Health. Okay, so Jamie, the, the issue of quarantine and isolation, these words are thrown around and they're very confusing. Sometimes they're used interchangeably. If you could just explain to people, what's the difference between quarantine and isolation and the time, the length of time for isolation and quarantine, where do those numbers come from? Yeah, it's, it's very confusing and you hear 10 days, you hear 10, 14 days, it's hard to know the difference. So isolation is really for people who are sick. Isolation is for people who have tested positive for COVID-19. And we isolate those people for 10 days, which means from the time that they start getting sick or from the time that they test positive if they don't have any symptoms, we count 10 days and we assume that is the amount of time that they could be contagious, that they could spread that disease to others. That's 10 days. So they need to stay home and they need to stay away from others so that they avoid um, spreading disease. Isolation refers to the amount of time uh, that somebody should stay away from others when they're sick they've developed symptoms of COVID-19 or they've tested positive for COVID-19. Quarantine is 14 days, and that's for those who were exposed to somebody who has COVID-19. Um, 14 days, where does that number come from? That is the maximum amount of time that somebody may develop symptoms after the day of exposure. So it's the incubation period. So it's a very confusing topic. Quarantine versus isolation, we use them interchangeably and the numbers are different. There's 10 days and there's 14 days, so what's the difference? So isolation is meant for people who are sick. We say 10 days because they could potentially spread the disease to others for up to 10 days after they themselves become sick. 10 days of isolation for someone sick with COVID-19 or is tested positive for COVID-19, even if they never get sick. Quarantine, on the other hand, is for, it's kind of a separate bucket, and that's for those who are exposed to someone who's sick, someone exposed uh, to a confirmed case of COVID-19. And for quarantine, we ask you to stay away from others, um, especially communal settings uh, where you could be around lots of people for 14 days because that is the incubation period for COVID-19. What's an incubation period? So anywhere between two and 14 days is the amount of time that somebody from the day that they're exposed to COVID-19 may still be able to develop symptoms and theoretically spread it to others. So that those are, um, Totally different numbers, but totally different concepts. 14 days for quarantine because you may develop symptoms in that time. And then 10 days for isolation because we don't want someone who we know is sick with COVID-19 to be out in the community and spreading to others. Okay, so how does somebody quarantine in their home? So there's a lot of students that are home from their schools because their they're grade or their class is quarantined. What does that mean when they're quarantined? What should they try to do? So it's a great question. Uh, they should really try their best to stay away from anyone else in their family. Um, and most importantly, they need to stay home. They need to avoid public spaces. Um, and the, the really, the best thing you could do is to maintain six feet of distancing between anyone in your house whenever that's possible. I know it's difficult. It's really, really difficult, um, but that's what's recommended. At least six feet of distancing whenever possible. If you have to come closer, the person who's on quarantine because they've been exposed, they should wear a mask. If they absolutely must come closer than six feet with someone in their house. And if I understand, that's because the person who's in quarantine may be infected mm -hmm. and either not have symptoms or not have symptoms yet. Exactly. And we don't want them to infect somebody else. Exactly. Now, what if someone is in a home with a lot of children or, and they just can't, you know, take a quarantine child and put them in their own wing of the house with their own bathroom and personal servant to, uh, sanitize everything, then what, what do you do? Right, you do the best you can. Right. You do the best you can. Um, there are some families where that will work and they've come up with very, very creative ways. There's great websites out there. Actually, Israel has mastered this concept of how to quarantine one child and still keep them entertained and engaged through the doorway, through a shower curtain. Um, with distancing, you do the best you can. Um, if you can, you know, separate that child from, the, or 
adult in the family, if it's the adult who's in quarantine, you do the best you can. Um, and certainly do your best to limit exposure to others in the family, even if it's impossible to do it 100% of the time. Because you never know when you're sick and you might, you want to limit anything you can do to limit. A lot of people ask the question, well, if I was exposed and we were wearing masks, do I still need to quarantine and why? It's a great question. Um, masks are a really important tool. We know that they prevent the spread of disease. Um, they are one of the best tools that we have, but they actually don't play a part in the definition of what is considered an exposure. So if you're within six feet of someone who has COVID-19 or two days before they got sick with COVID-19 and, and you were in close contact with them for more than 15 minutes, it's still considered an exposure even though one or both of you may have been wearing a mask. It doesn't really play a part in a definition. Um, you're still considered exposed out of an abundance of caution. We want to make sure that, that if you were infected, that you're not gonna go and spread it to somebody. Right, the masks aren't perfect. We see people wearing them halfway down. We have the chin protector masks and the neck protector masks and, and everybody wants to do their best to wear their masks, but it, it, it could still be that they're not perfect and we wanna do everything we can. Right. And there's lots of different kinds out there in the community. Right. They're made of different fabric, they have different number of layers. Um, so because we don't know there's too much variability, we just say we don't calculate that as part of the definition. If you were too close for too long, you're exposed. And there's good evidence that taking these precautions stops the spread, is that correct? Absolutely. This is, Absolutely. yeah. This is not just something that doctors say. We have actually research showing that cases go down when people with do these things like quarantine isolation. No, masks and distancing are incredible tools and our case numbers would be through the roof if we hadn't if we didn't have these tools readily available to us. They prevent disease every day. Okay, thank you so much Jamie. Jamie has so much work to do. I don't know if you know, but there's a pandemic going on and that is her specialty. So we're going to end right there. Hopefully this helps. Thanks. Thank you Dr. Dan. Thank you other medical professionals. Social distance. Our hope is that this video has kind of given you a little bit of base information to help you understand uh, what's the deal with COVID.